is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to auto auction rebuilds i'm sitting in the truck because it's cold outside i ain't trying to be out there unless i got to we won another car today and i'm a little nervous about it but i think it's going to be all right this is a 2012 yeah fairly new for the channel right 2012 wow we don't do that very often 2012 nissan altima sr so it's the 3.5 with a cvt transmission i know nobody wants a cvt transmission but it is what it is man we got it for the cheap price of 900 dollars. this car doesn't drive it runs but it doesn't move but but we found a leak at the radiator i think or maybe one of the transmission lines it's too far front of the transmission for it to be a transmission problem so i think if we go grab us some cvt fluid from a parts store i would be willing to bet that once it gets a little fluid in it it'll probably move on its own 900 bucks came out to 12 1250 out the door after fees now uh, oh we anyway i'm not going to get into it. there's another surprise too but for now let's focus on the nissan which should be coming out any minute all right guys there she is the 2012 altima 3.5 sr it sounds like a really like mean and awesome car but I don't know, what is it, like 250 horsepower or something like that? <laughs> I don't think it's super impressive, but uh, she's not a bad looking car, man. Oh boy, can he fit? Th these guys, man, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Their job scares me. <laughs> uh, these guys are fearless, man. Look, I just cleaned the trailer up. I mean, it probably doesn't look the greatest, but I really did just wash it. So she, uh, she looks pretty good. I got another car to come pick up after this. I guess uh, maybe we'll talk about it in this video. Maybe not. I don't know. I had no idea that I had won another car, but I went in there to pay for this one, and they were like, yep, you got another one, Randy. All right. These guys are so good. <laughs> well, it's ours now. What do you guys think? 900 bucks for a 2012 Altima that I'm pretty sure just has a busted radiator or uh, a busted uh, radiator coolant line. Good tires, if I remember right. Yeah, tires are good. A little ding there. Looks like, uh, you know, a little bit of damage back here. You can see that it's got some, this fender liner is just destroyed. This thing obviously, uh, ugh. Yeah, I just, didn't I say I just cleaned my trailer? <laughs> Honestly though, uh, it's a little bit dirty. <laughs> this is dented in a little bit right here. Yeah, it's not too bad, guys. It's not too, too bad. Clips, this all needs to be popped back in. Yeah, it's got a good set of tires. I didn't really pay this one too much mind. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. We're not locked. Please tell me we're not locked. Oh, thank God. <laughs> it's, it's very dirty. And obviously this car has been sitting uh, for quite some time. But, uh, man, she ran good. We got her to fire up and she actually ran very well. I'm going to go ahead and unlock these doors just to give myself a little peace of mind. You know, it's dirty. This is the, uh, that's the light for the back. We'll have to go through the car a little bit and, you know, see if we get any cool stuff. We'll definitely do that when we get it back to the, to the Hacienda. 2012, push to start and everything, man. Just a nice little car. And... I really do think that with some CBT fluid, she'll probably fire right up, guys. I, I honestly believe that. So I'm going to go ahead and strap this bad boy down, and we are going to take it to the new house. That's right. This is the first car going to the new shop. All right, guys, we got her strapped down. You can see it's leaking a little bit already onto my freshly clean trailer right there. You see, it's coming right out of where the radiator is. So I'm like 99% certain. It just needs a radiator, guys. And this thing will be back on the road. Uh, 
yeah anyway strapped down she's ready to go it's you know definitely not the best looking car scratches and nicks and stuff all over but whatever man you know $900 winning bid I'm not going to complain too much I think with a good detail auto spot LLC probably make this thing look damn near new let's get it to the house all right guys here we go Ah, <laughs> first car in the new shop, man. Ah, oh, it feels good. It feels good. Guys, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a little, uh, I'm a little excited about this. All right, guys. <laughs> this should be fun. We're going to see what it's like to unload this. Uh, obviously, it doesn't drive, I don't think. I guess we could try to, try to start it and put it in reverse. says there's no key but the key is right here in my hand great <laughs> it says there's no key this car just started the other day guys all right so it looks like there's a little cubby you can stick the key in and hopefully there we go all right yes Let's see if we can get this thing to roll. That's rolling the wrong way. Okay. Well, this should be a ton of fun because we have to try to push it backwards. Oh boy. Oh. Guys, this is a uh, this is not going to be easy. Okay. This isn't working. This is a uh, this is what we call a problem. Let's see if I can just push the damn thing. Let me get my booster pack out of here. Close the hood. Oh, we're leaking a uh, we're leaking coolant now as well. So that's new. How close are we? Come on. Oh wow. That coolant is very slippery. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> well, as they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, boy, that's just... <laughs> uh, I, I didn't plan that out. It's hard doing this stuff all by yourself, man. It, it really is. It sucks. But uh, you know what? Dang it, we got it done, man. We got it done. The car is in the shop. Now it's uh, leaking coolant, which is great. You can see the blue coolant leaking underneath it along with the CVT fluid. Now normally you'd be like, oh no. But I suspected from the beginning that we were going to need a, uh, uh, what is this? I don't know. I used it. That we were going to need a radiator and the fact it's leaking coolant and it's leaking uh, CVT fluid makes me feel even more confident that the problem is actually what I thought it was. So that's good. I'm going to actually let it run for just a few minutes. Try to charge the battery up a little bit and i'm going to kind of scoot the car over because i got to make room for the next project that's coming to the channel in one of the next videos boy it is windy out here today we spent our first night in the new property and uh <laughs> doesn't it figure man i came out here and i went through all the trouble of cleaning all of the leaves out of the pond i also treated it you can see the water is actually kind of a greenish blue now. Um, 
of course, with all the leaves on the ground, it's almost impossible, you know, to completely clean this up. I also cleaned most of the leaves out of this. I came out here and treated the koi pond as well. The fish look, I, and I cleaned all the leaves out of it and it's full of leaves again. Like I've got to get a landscaper out here to get all of these leaves sucked up. Um, I fed the fish. You can see I've got the fountain working. It's got a nice little fountain in there now. <clears throat> okay, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to try to figure out, hopefully in this video, I have no tools here. Um, <laughs> yet another issue, no tools. We need to know if the Ultima has a, a bad radiator. Oh, some of these lights are just, oh, you know why? Because it's freezing out. We're gonna, we're gonna need some better lights in here, guys. That's for sure. Oh, we know that it's leaking uh, CVT and we know that it's leaking uh, a little bit of antifreeze, which I mean, pretty much tells me that it's the radiator. And I found one on Amazon. You know what's great about being in the city? Amazon Prime. I'm so used to living in the country where it takes four or five days to get something from Amazon. Whereas here, I can have a radiator for this the day after tomorrow. So, and for only $88. Now, I did some research on what it takes to change a radiator in an Ultima. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, one of the worst designs I have ever seen. Most people take the front bumper off, okay? Front bumper has to come completely off. Grill comes off, and this whole radiator support ends up coming out. Now, it looks like somebody's done some working on this. Uh, it could stand a radiator support. It's got a crack there. And somebody has, uh, obviously, I wanna make it very clear, this is not from me. This isn't me rigging anything up. This is, somebody used rivets to kinda hold some of this together. So, okay, I, I don't know, man. It wasn't me, it was like that before me. Somebody obviously did some, some wrenching on it. What I gotta do is I gotta find something to pull these clips out, because I wanna get a closer look at the radiator. Uh, most people pull the whole front end off and the condenser has to come out. It's a huge deal, but I saw a couple videos on YouTube. That's right. I watch videos to learn how to do things that I've never done before. And what I found is you do have to discharge the Freon. Okay. Once you do that, you pull the condenser out and you have full access. Once you take the battery out and the condenser and the grill, you have full access to take the radiator and it, it pops right out. It comes right out. So. Let's get these clips off. Let's verify that we do in fact need a radiator. All right, we've got her running. I got the grill off, which really wasn't that big of a deal. There was a, a couple little push tabs here, a couple push tabs up here. And then on the back side of the grill, for those of you that may be trying to do this yourself, uh, these are fun. There's these little clips down at the bottom you gotta get your hand behind the grill and up under here and just push on the very bottom. You gotta push those in. And when you push them in, pull the grill out at the same time. Now I'm already smelling fluid. And you can see it's quite wet over here. And that's not air conditioning. The air conditioning works just fine. So what we gotta do is, first of all, we'll turn off the booster pack so that we can maneuver it a little bit better. And we'll try to use this light to get a view of where this uh, this is leaking from. I see fluid already spewing out. There it is, right there. There it is. I bet you guys can't see it because I can't really get you down in there. Hold on, let me see if I can do you one better. All right, I know that the video is shaky. I know that it really, really sucks, but you can see it spewing right there, right? I wish I could focus this in better. It just it just won't focus any better. Uh, the iPhone is failing me at this very moment. Let me see if I can get you in just a tad bit better. Yeah, unfortunately, that's probably about as good as I'm gonna be able to do. You can see it's actually, it actually doesn't look like it's leaking from the radiator. 
as much as it looks like it's leaking from a connector down there. That is a fitting, and I think that the line actually broke going from the transmission line to the radiator, so this may not actually be a bad radiator. Although, I did notice we were leaking coolant the other day, so we probably ought to replace the radiator. And the radiator that you order comes with those new fittings, so if that is the problem, a new radiator will solve that. So as we speak, it started leaking a considerable amount of coolant down here. You see that, uh, hold on, I'm in your light, aren't I? That's kind of a, you've got your CVT oil here and you got your blue coolant right there. So I was able to verify after getting down in there a little bit further, I can't get the camera down in there, but the CVT fluid leak is actually just a broken line. The aluminum fit, fitting under there has cracked at the top. It's got a hairline crack. So the CVT issue is easily fixed with a fitting. However, because we're now pouring coolant out from underneath it pretty heavily uh, as the system builds up pressure, obviously, uh, the radiator's blown. So no big deal. I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna order one from Amazon for 90 bucks. Be here in two days. And then we will proceed with taking the rest of this apart. Thankfully, we already did part of it in this video. Uh, the next part, we're gonna have to take these bolts out here. We're gonna have to take this clip out here, bolt there, clip there. We'll get this piece right here off, this metal bracket right here off, and we'll probably go ahead and take these two bolts out and just pull this whole thing as one assembly. That makes more sense. We'll take this line off the condenser. We'll pull the condenser out after taking this connector off. And then I think once the condenser is out, it's just a matter of the radiator should just pull out once you get the battery out. Hold on, I'm forgetting some steps. Take the battery out. You can get to your hoses and your lines down here. Upper hose is over here. And then I do believe the radiator will just kind of slide up and out. Uh, not a horrible, huge deal. Uh, so this car potentially could be back on the road in just a couple days. And yes, I'm aware I accidentally gave away this car sitting over here. Actually, I wasn't aware of it. I totally, it slipped my mind until I realized that uh, I had shown the car in video. It was gonna be a total surprise for you, but yes, sitting right here is, well, you guys comment below. Most of you know what it is. And she, look, all I can say is there's a video coming out shortly that's gonna have this car in it and we're gonna have to get this car to the other shop. Um, I've had a lot of questions about the other shop. Let me try to address those real quick because I've been getting a slew of comments. I've been getting emails, Instagram, everybody's wanting to know about the shop situation. Here's the deal guys. This shop right here, it's cold today. There's no heat in this shop. There's also no lift in this shop. There's no air conditioning in this shop. So the idea of bringing my lift from the other shop here and all of my tools over here, I don't think that's gonna happen. I'll get me some basic tools that I can bring over here to do some just basic regular stuff like I've always done. I'm used to working on the ground and I'm used to working in the cold. I'm also used to working in the heat, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna do it all the time. I don't wanna make this like my full time place. What I foresee happening is this place being like a halfway point to the car's destination. Since we've got this deal worked out with IA and everything, it kind of makes more sense to me to do the work on the car, at, or cars, I should say, at the shop down there. We've got air conditioning there, insulation, we've got a lift, we've got boxes of tools, we got everything we could ever need to do what we need to do down at the other AAR headquarters. This place right here is great if you just need to do some minor tweaking, you know, a little bit small things here. If you're doing top end work, like uh, spark plugs or things like that, radiators, you could do, you could do that stuff here. But if you're gonna be doing something like this, where there's considerable suspension damage, now that you're gonna to wanna to lift for. So I think it makes sense for cars like this, those need to go on down to AR headquarters where we can actually get the work done. Next, this is also kind of a holding facility. Meaning, once the cars are set up and ready to go off to IAA where they can go to their new owners, um, this is the place that they sit while I wait for IAA to review the car's information, once they approve it, load it up on a trailer, take it right down the street to IAA. That makes sense. This place is perfect 
as a, as a holding facility, as a halfway point, kind of like a transition home between being worked on at AR and being sent all the way over to IAA. This is the perfect halfway point. So when IAA calls me and says, hey, we're ready for that car, put it on the trailer, drive it right up the road, drop it off. So I guess the big question is like, are we getting rid of the AAR headquarters? No, no, we're not getting rid of it. Guys, we're even leaving a lot of stuff there because we're still gonna utilize that house. Yes, even though Casper tends to visit with us, we're gonna deal with that. That is still my house. I almost have that house paid off in full, guys. That is my place. I spent a lot of money on the house and I spent a lot of money on that shop. It's not going anywhere. It's also the base for the wholesale dealership. If we were to sell that house or get rid of it, I wouldn't have a dealership anymore. So no, that house is not going anywhere. We're keeping it. In fact, I plan on continuing to do work down there. I'll just have to drive down there from the city to work on the cars. Now, with that said, I'm not picking one house over the other. I mean, obviously this one is far nicer. This is the house when we wanna be in the city and we need a break, this is where we're gonna be. We'll be right here. And the country house, that's the house that we can be when we, get, we don't wanna be in the city. So neither one is like our primary residence. They're both a place that we're gonna stay. Um, probably about an equal amount of time, I, I would imagine. So the city's great when you wanna be in the city. It gets tiring, okay? The country is great when you just wanna get away and be away from people for a while. But both of them have their problems. The city, everything is right here. Uh, it was so nice to wake up this morning and go grab a cup of coffee from Starbucks. I can't tell you the last time I was able to go to Starbucks and get a coffee and a ham sandwich. Like, you can't do that in the country. Uh, it's nice to have the grocery store right down the street. It's nice to have gas stations all over the place. In the country where, where AR headquarters is, there's nothing. It's 30 minutes to get to the city, any city, to get anything, and it's 30 minutes home. And you pretty much have McDonald's and Carl's Jr. and Sonic. That's your options. So it's nice being back in the city. It's nice having all of this around me. It'll be nice not having to drive 30, sorry, not 30 minutes, drive an hour to do my Copart walk around and then drive an hour back home to do my video editing. It'll be nice to have internet that actually works all the time. But even with all of these benefits, it just gets tiring being in the city sometimes. And sometimes you just want to get the heck out of Dodge and go enjoy the country where you can sit on your land, you can have a 20 foot bonfire and you can just relax in the middle of nowhere. So we have the best of both worlds at, that po at this point. So I hope that answers your question. No, we're not getting rid of AR headquarters. No, I don't intend to move the lift and all of that stuff over here. It doesn't make sense. This place is gonna be a scorcher in the summer. And as I said, it's cold today and this shop is very cold. So is the concrete floor. All right, so I think it just makes sense to keep AAR headquarters, AAR headquarters to keep the shop exactly the way it is. All my tools are there. There's no reason to move all that. This is just a place, there's a hailstorm. While my cars are in transition from AAR to IAA, they can all be pulled in the shop right here where they're nice and safe, guys. So I, I do hope that that answers your question. Stay tuned because this car is damaged and it's a little more damaged than I thought it was. And then I damaged it a little bit more. So now we need even more parts because uh, anyway, I, I'm actually really upset with myself because of some extra damage that happened to this car because I I didn't, I didn't think, I just didn't think. So now we're gonna be out an extra $250. This sucker, stay tuned, man. Video, all I can tell you is the video for this one is coming out, I believe it's February 10th, 99.9% .9 certain. This is coming out February 10th, stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed the Altima, which is sitting here running. I'm trying to charge the battery up. I think the Altima is gonna be a beast of a car when we get it back together, get it down to uh, the Auto Spot LLC, get it detailed. Uh, guys, I think this car right here is gonna be clean. I do, I almost don't wanna send this one off. It's, just, it's a nice car, but anyway, if you enjoyed the content, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Drop your comments down below, guys. Don't forget, I got new merch. If you're interested in some new merchandise, we've got everything from V-necks to long sleeve shirts to pullover hoodies to stretch pants to coffee mugs, face masks. We got just about everything down below.
just click down below and you'll see the merchandise from Teespring. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. I would truly appreciate it. Facebook, please. Okay, that's a little weird. Facebook, I'm 400 followers away on Facebook. 400, that's it. 400 followers from being monetized on Facebook. Please, auto auction rebuilds over on Facebook. If you would just go over there and click that follow button, just click the follow button. 400 followers, guys, and Facebook is monetized, and it's a few extra dollars a month that can go in to help. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I mean, we've been doing a few cars. We've been doing things a little bit differently in 2021, all right? I made it my personal goal to make 2021 a year to step up, to level up. And I'm doing the best I can with what I have right now. Just to give you an idea, yesterday, these two cars cost me $5,000, okay? So yesterday I spent $5,000. Today, I have to go pick up Swamp Vet. Swamp Vet is another $2,000 to get it out of paint. So 5,000, 2,000, that's $7,000 thousand dollars in the last two days not to mention this house i had to shell out fifty three hundred dollars okay just to get everything started for the house so when you add that up what five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we're over twelve thousand dollars in the past two or three days okay so like i said my goal for 2021 was to really try to step things up no we don't have a viper yet but I'm trying to gradually build up. And I'm still gonna do all the cars you love, man. That's not going anywhere. Like the old Chevy Caprice. And what's going on with the Caprice? Nothing. In fact, I'm about to go for one of your next videos. I'm taking a 22 foot Penske truck down to AR headquarters. It's gonna be a vlog style video. And then I'm gonna make an attempt to drive the Chevy Caprice since we've never, we have no idea. We've never driven the car more than down the road and back. I'm actually going to get in it, leave the Penske truck at the AR house, and I'm going to drive the Caprice all the way back here. So that's over an hour drive on the interstate. Stay tuned for that vlog. That should be entertaining. I am going to continue. If I find cheap, fun, regular average car, I mean, these are regular average cars. Most people can afford $900 for an Altima, right? Now, the BMW, that was $4,000 out the door. So... I understand that may be a little out of a lot of people's price range. And I understand that. But at the same time, there are people that can absolutely afford something like this. I want to try to do something for everybody. So we'll continue with cheap, average cars like you guys love. That's what the channel's built on. I'm not, I'm not changing that. We're not going anywhere. But I do want to step things up for some of the other people that are wanting to see a little bit better content. So here we go. 2012 Altima, 2004 BMW Z4 with a 3.0 liter. You can't go wrong with that. Only thing wrong with it is automatic transmission. But... Spoiler, Carfax one owner. That tells you something. Carfax one owner. This car is honestly a absolute steal. Now I'm going to get out of here, guys. Stay safe out there. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.